Yeah, this is Sports Desk. Can we begin with this story that the Super Eagles will know their opponents as the draws for the 32nd Africa Cup of Nations finals hold on Friday in Cairo, Egypt. It is the first time 24 teams will be taking part in the Nations Cup from its humble beginning with three teams in the first edition of the competition in Sudan 62 years ago. The Eagles are placed in part one of the draws and face the prospect of being placed in the same group with perennial rivals Ghana and Ivory Coast, who are in Port 2. Some of the other countries in Port 2 are the Democratic Republic of Congo, Mali, Guinea, and Algeria. Record seven-time winners and hosts, Egypt. Five-time winners and defending champions, Cameroon. Three-time winners, Nigeria. 2004 champions, Tunisia. Senegal and 1976 champions, Morocco, are the seeded countries in the draw. Six countries have reached the final without ever winning it. They are Mali, Burkina Faso, Uganda, Guinea, Libya, and Senegal. The 32nd Africa Cup of Nations will hold between the 21st of June to the 19th of July this year across six venues in Egypt. Well, indeed, I'm looking forward to the draw, but then um, in the in the situation we have them um, to indeed analyze the biggest football tournament as far as the continent of Africa is concerned. And we have former Super Eagles goalkeeper at the 1994 edition of the Nations Cup. He was in between the sticks. Peter Rufai, fondly called Dodo Mayana by fans. Glad to have you join us on the show. We have the Super Eagles in Port One which means they will avoid countries like Cameroon, who are the defending champions, the pharaohs of Egypt, and the Taranga Lions of Senegal in the group stage. In part two, um, you have the likes of Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, Dodo Mayana, which other team do you think can um, give the Eagles and um, the favorite teams in part one a run for their money to lift the AFCON trophy? Actually, I, th I, th I think it's going to be, uh, first of all, uh, I'm very glad to be here with you this uh, beautiful evening. And uh, uh, to talk about uh, football, uh, one of the African greatest uh, tournaments. And indeed, uh, we're about to experience uh, the draws, which I believe, I pray for Nigeria to be in a very beautiful uh, group. And that will mean any team that is confronting Nigeria um, I'm not shaking at all. I'm, I'm solid as always when it has to do with uh, uh, group stage and uh, the port uh, will look or the group will look uh, forward to being because football these days we don't have underdogs but sometimes we want to make the statement by saying this is an underdog country but these days I don't believe uh, you see countries national team and you call them underdogs because now everyone has grown to understand the uh, rudiments of the game itself in, on big stages. So I, look, I just pray for a beautiful draw to say. All right, let me, uh, Dudu Mayana, let me put you on the spot there. Which team outside the favorites in Port 1 could spring a surprise to win the 2019 Nations Cup from your um, estimation? Um, personally, um, Looking up to my country, Nigeria, I seriously believe and I believe we have what it takes. So I just want to be honest to say, look, Nigeria will sail through. Dodo Mayana, you won the tournament when it was in a 16-team format in Tunisia 25 years ago. Egypt 2019. We will have 24 countries. Do you think the number would affect the quality or standard of play? Um, I, I think uh, the, if I use the word uh, affect, I think it should be from a positive perspective uh, because uh, football is becoming more uh, interesting in terms of uh, uh, right from up there from FIFA uh, with uh, different uh, footballing uh, new rules coming in. Uh, the 
the AVI systems and uh, many other new rules that are coming in. Uh, the 24 uh, nations that will be verging for this year's uh, um, AFCON is going to make it interesting because we want to see managers with skills. We want to see players with skills. Skills in the sense of ability to sustain the whole duration of a tournament of this uh, nature. So that's why I say it is interesting. It is not a negative aspect of uh, the 24 nations uh, verging for the trophy, but it's, ma it's making it more interesting for fans and uh, for the players as well. Uh, well, um, let me ask you this one uh, before we let you go. Um, the Nations Cup team that won in 1994, you were part of that team. Um, what are you doing at the moment? Because we haven't produced this quality of players. What are you doing at the moment as a member of that golden generation to help raise this sort of players? What are you doing to help Nigeria? Um, personally, um, I, let me look at it from an angle I call thanking God Almighty for uh, who I am today and uh, thanking Nigerians for their wonderful support. Okay. I, uh, sitting down here, I want to tell Nigeria with this platform now that Peter Rufa is a product of a home base, uh, league football, and as well, uh, my colleagues that played alongside with me, uh, Blessed Memory, uh, Stephen Keshi, uh, Austin Eguavon, uh, Ucho Kechuku, and uh, Mike Emenalo, and the rest of them. Apart from Mike, most of us, we are all product of uh, home base uh, campaign then. And uh, this uh, crop of players went through rigorous uh, football training back home. They went through rigorous league then. Uh, we had a very solid league. We had the principal cups then. The principal cup was really producing talents, quality players, players full of potentials, and administrators as well, because the administrators were even from the schools. So by the time you get into a professional club side, you meet you know, gurus who are you know, administrators. And making life of this uh, football players then worthy to really uh, see football as what we all love to, you know, play at that time. So I believe sincerely that uh, if we should go back to those concepts, right. it will really help Nigeria. So, okay. and that is attracting me to be one of those who want to believe that going back to those concepts of the, of the olden days where we have people with passion and love and the uh, um, in-depth of what football really is, it will help us develop the likes of uh, uh, JJ Okocha, Kano right. Mankwo, and Sia Sia. And that is why I am back now to Nigeria to do, be part do, of do, this. Dodo do, do Mayana, because of time, I must say a very big thank you indeed um, for talking to us on the show and sharing your wealth of experience. Former player Sam Soji has tipped the Super Eagles as one of the favorites to win the 2019 AFCON trophy. The former Reading and Portsmouth defender also named host nation Egypt, Senegal and the Black Stars of Ghana as some of the other favorites to win the biggest football tournament in Africa. Regulars, you know, the Egypt and the uh, you know, Senegal because they got some good players, uh, Super Eagles. Um, yeah, there's some very good teams in, in the tournament, but at the same time, I'm always going to pick, pick the Eagles. Um, I watched the, the Egyptians play the other day against uh, the Super Eagles. Good players, good team. We, uh, yeah, we scored a good goal, uh, early goal, and I think that changed the game. If we didn't score that goal, it would have been a different result. Uh, they're good side. They, you can tell they, they, they've been coached. They knew exactly what they were doing. They, they knew exactly where each player was. So, but the early goal saved us, and um, hopefully we can uh, do that again. But yeah, Super is my pick. Well, all about the 2019 AFCON tournament. We indeed had Dodo Mayana Pituru Fire on the show. Let's indeed take you all the way from Nigeria to Holland, where we have Johannes Bonfrey, a former coach of 
the super egos. And um, Joanna's born free, the world, most especially Nigeria, will not forget the AFCON 1994 squad. Recently, the Nigeria Football Federation celebrated these heroes and you were a part of that team. Johannes Bonfrey, could you just tell us what made the 1994 Super Eagles special? Okay. Good afternoon, Nigeria. This is Bonfrey Joe from out of Holland speaking with you. Yes, what made the team special? The special make the team that we have worked very, very hard in the training camp to prepare the teams, not only for this tournament, but also before in uh, Senegal, we have prepared a team. We make very strong competitions in the camp. So any player who like to play in the squad, he have to work and give his best performance to get in the team. Then on that time, we have many players who like to play in the first team which is going to Tunisia and that makes the team very very strong right um, I understand at 70 years plus and a grandfather we hear you still want to coach after all these years of exploits why is it that you still want to keep coaching instead of retiring and having time with your family and grandchildren I have grandchildren I am retired but I love football. I like football. I enjoy football. When I'm standing on the, on the pitch to train the players and I see that my players improve with every training, that makes me very happy. And that's why I enjoy it to teach, learn players to improve themselves. I enjoy it. And that keeps me also young. Then I don't feel retired. I still feel young. Johannes Bonfrey, on the 10th of April 1994, Tunisia was indeed a blessed land for the most populous black nation on earth, Nigeria. As the Super Eagle squad lifted aloft the Nations Cup trophy for the second time. As a Dutchman who came to work in Africa, what was the experience like for you, Johannes Bonfrey, 25 years ago? Yeah, that uh, 20 years ago, I started already in 1990 or 1989 to work with Nigeria, prepare themselves for the Algeria Nations Cup in Africa. And that was my first experience. And from that moment, I came up for the football players from Africa because I saw that they have a lot of potential in themselves as individual football player but it didn't come out of out of them because there was not enough uh, coaching possibilities to teach them and to bring them up so from that moment from 1990 I was yeah surprised with the qualities from the football player from Africa well, Coach Joe Bonfrey there, thank you so much uh, for joining us on Sports Desk today, all the way from Holland. Now, the 13th edition of the Africa Under-17 Cup of Nations kicks off on Sunday in Tanzania with eight countries participating in the competition. Five-time world champion Tegodi Niglet will face host Tanzania in the opening Group A match in Dar es Salaam. Nigeria beat Ghana in the final of the West African Football Union Wafu B on the 17th championship last September to qualify for the tournament. The second game on Sunday will be between Angola and Uganda. Group B has Cameroon, Guinea, Morocco and Senegal. Well, from the Under-17 Championship, let's take a look at the Falcons. They are hopeful of bringing back the FIFA Women's World Cup trophy to Nigeria later in the year. The trophy was on tour of countries that will participate in the FIFA Women's World Cup later this year in France. TVC sports correspondent Chidi Beriziani has details on this report. The FIFA Women's World Cup is right here in the capital city of Nigeria, Abuja, and it is looking very, very good. The trophy made its 16th stop in Nigeria in a visit of 24 nations that have qualified for the FIFA Women's Tournament in France later this year. 
The trophy was accompanied by FIFA's chief women football officer, Sarai Behrman, former Super Eagles sport, Peter Odemwinge, who unveiled the trophy wearing hand gloves as only former winners and heads of states of countries that have won the trophy can touch it with their bare hands. Representing the Minister of Youth and Sports, Hawa Akinyemi expressed optimism on the return of the trophy to Nigeria. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Nigeria once more and to wish you the best in the entire program of the trophy tour. After the visit at the stadium, the trophy was moved on to the Transcorp Hilton where it was on display for media and fans to take photos. The Falcons have been given relatively the best preparation any women's team have gotten prior to any tournament, and coach of the side, Thomas Denerby, will be counting on his experience to take the Falcons past the quarterfinal stage. I know to handle my feeling. If, if we win, yes, I will not uh, be up here. I will stay calm. If we lose, I will not go down. I will stay calm. I have my working face on. <laughs> So, and I think that is the most important to, to learn how to handle your feelings, whatever happened. With tickets sold out for the Nigeria versus France game on the 17th of 